For RCR Wireless News, my name is Sean Kinney and I'm here with Andre de Villiers in the Ericsson booth to learn a little bit more about the microwave portfolio. So Andre, as it relates to backhaul, so much of the discussion is focused on fiber. Help me understand where microwave fits in. Sure. Well, um, as you can imagine, fiber, uh, there's definitely a focus on on deploying fiber as, as, uh, as much as possible, but fiber can't be everywhere. It's just not cost, uh, cost effective to deploy in every location. Um, so microwave is basically there to extend an operator's fiber footprint. Um, what, uh, what, we, what we can do is, uh, uh, is, is utilize fiber for, um, uh, for short distance extensions uh, to uh, fiber deployments such as uh, an E-band uh, microwave link um, that is capable of up to 10 gigabits per second uh, over a two kilometer you know, sort of range. Um, but also it's important to know that uh, a lot of the discussion around uh, high density fiber and CRAN and things like that are, are isolated to you know, dense urban sort of microwave or dense urban environments. Uh, and that's not necessarily the case in the, in the majority of cell sites. Or, uh, there's a lot of suburban and, urban, or, and rural uh, sites where uh, you don't necessarily need, and I think we've done projections that, that, that say, you know, the, the need for uh, backhaul capacity is still sub one gigabit per second, and even, even as you go to 5G in, in some of those suburban uh, applications. So uh, we, we need to be able to cover a range of distances as well as capacities uh, in order to serve all the cell sites that are, that are out there. So, Andre, as it relates to 5G, can microwave scale up to meet the capacity requirements? Oh, absolutely. Yes, with uh, with with uh, with microwave, we have uh, uh, we have products in a number of different frequency bands. And when you're talking about some of the bands where we're talking about supporting with 5G, um, we uh, we we're afforded the luxury of having large channels. So, for instance, E-band in the 70 and 80 gigahertz range, which is represented by the Minilink 6352. Um, the allocation is uh, up to uh, two, gig two gigahertz of a frequency range, a frequ a frequency band, uh, and with that we can we can support up to 10 gigabits per second um, uh, over a, a two kilometer, uh, roughly that sort of range. Um, not that you're going to need that necessarily at every site. So um, uh, we we also can scale capacity licenses so that a, a, an operator can. Uh, start with, uh, you know, a couple of gigabits and basically scale on up, uh, you know, to 10 or, you know, beyond as, as Roadmap allows us to do that uh, from there. In other bands, such as 60 gigahertz, which is um, represented by a, uh, the Globe product up on the, up on the, uh, the pole over there, uh, we can do uh, uh, one gigabit per second uh, over a very short uh, distance using a 60 gigahertz uh, V-band. Uh, that allows us to go pole to pole so that you can extend fiber from one pole to another pole with, uh, with, with, uh, with very short reach. Um, you know, so, so that sort of application can work. And then if you have to uh, traverse much, much longer uh, distances than we have our traditional microwave represented by the Minilink 6363, that, uh, that starts in 6 gigahertz and works uh, and, and is available all the way up through 39 gigahertz. And then based on that, you can, you, can, you can hit many miles, 20, 30 miles, even with 6 gigahertz. Um, now, that's, that's answering the range question. What, we, what we're able to do with this radio, since it's so small, is stack those radios into multiple channel configurations so that um, with, with one of these channels, we can support uh, over the air uh, up to a little bit more than 750 megahertz or megabits per second. So you start to add a second radio. We're talking about 1.5 gigabits per second. We have a four plus zero radio configuration that's represented with the long haul split here that would, you know, could get you, give you three gigabits per second and on from there. So, uh, yeah, I, absolutely, we believe that uh, that microwave is there. And then there's also research and development into bands well beyond what we're able to do in E-band that uh, has the promise to, to deliver 100 gigabits per second. So it sounds like you have a lot of flexibility in your microwave portfolio here. Maybe to bring this to life a little bit, can you give me an example of a deployment scenario where microwave would be a great choice for an operator? Okay. 
Um, a couple, a couple of uh, different scenarios, let's say. So, um, with, so I'll actually start with Front Hall, with uh, represented by the 6392 that Michael mentioned earlier. Um, in that case, you might have a macro site that that has uh, good coverage toward maybe two of its sectors, and then that third sector may be blocked by a building. But if you want to provide coverage on the other side of that building, then uh, then you need to put the provide the radio there, the baseband may be located with the other two sectors. So the, the SIPRI link that would be required between the baseband and that remote radio head could be connected uh, with, uh, with the, uh, with the uh, SIPRI over microwave solution. So that, that would be one, one case. Um, other cases would be where, uh, where, where fiber is not uh, available, um, uh, whether it's a rural environment or um, or whether you know it takes a long time to to bring fiber to a location, or you don't have the uh, the, the permits to do so, then then microwave can be uh, can be utilized uh, to to bring a link uh, up quickly to to serve that site. Okay, so it, it sounds like microwave has a very good place in 5G. Just uh, another tool in the toolkit, right? Absolutely. All right. Thank you very much for your time today. Yes, thank you.